Hey everyone, welcome back to another Friday Foursome Response. I've been wanting to do one of these for a while, but I haven't had the time. But I'm going to squeeze this in before work because I really like this topic. I've actually been thinking about it. It's harder than I thought it would be. It's your top four favorite uh, developers slash publishers. Um, now, the publisher part of it makes it, that's what makes it difficult because so many companies have subsidiaries and uh, or they purchase studios. So I kind of went with that. Um, they also develop their own games as well. These are in alphabetical order, so uh, not any of, like tiered list. Here we go. First up is, let me get the, the best summary of the company. Interplay. I was really big into PC gaming growing up. When we got our 286, uh, that's all I wanted to do was just sit on it. I had a Nintendo back then, but all I wanted to do was just mess around on the computer and I'd go to Office Depot I, and these little tent cells they would have in parking lots. And I'd get shareware and I would just milk as much gameplay as I could out of those. And this is a great encapsulation of Interplay. This came out some years ago, uh, actually 1999. They were 15 years old then. The collection includes uh, probably the, the series they're best known for, or at least these days, Fallout. Also includes Battle Chess, which was a massive hit back then and a lot of fun. Castles 2, one of my absolute favorites. Conquest of the New World, that's a really fun game as well. Uh, the classic Descent. There's also Shattered Steel, which Bioware developed. Um, Stonekeep, which it was kind of infamous back in the day because it took them so long and cost them so much to make. And when it came out, it was already behind the times. Um, Dragon Wars, a very early role-playing game. Uh, MAX is a strategy game. Whiplash was a fun racer. Unfortunately, these are just the kind of the manuals they shove together. It's all in black and white, so you won't get much out of it looking at this. But I picked up this set probably seven or eight years ago. Um, <laughs> that's apparently just, oh, Solitaire Deluxe, if you're into that. I was trying to see if I could find anything that really stood out that people would recognize. But um, Virtual Pool. This was actually a lot of fun. Probably the only pool game I've ever enjoyed. I remember it came on a demo disc uh, of PC Gamer, the actual diskette of it. And, man, that took up a whole weekend. Yeah, here's Fallout. You see some early art, uh, early manual art for it. Looks a little, uh, Pip-Boy looks a little older back then, or Vault-Boy. And this is a uh, Super Famicom version of the first Castles. Now... I remember I picked up, after I got a, a Penny of 90, I found Castles 2 in a bargain bin at Office Depot. Fell in love with that game. The CD-ROM version added um, these little cuts. Actually, no, I had the diskette version because both of them had these very basic black and white uh, public domain, uh, clip from public domain movies. But the CD-ROM version actually had a documentary on Castles that came with it. Mine didn't have that. I wish I still had the box for it. I, I can't believe I, I lost it because... I remember when I beat the game, it was like 1.30 in the morning, and that was on the 286, and um, I couldn't turn the speakers down because they were internal, and I won, and it was the loudest beeping and booping in the world, my parents came in wondering what I was doing up so late. All the lights were off, I was just huddled in front of the monitor in the kitchen. But what was so much fun about it is that you could build your own castle design, save it, and you could watch your little peasants go and build the castle, and when an enemy would invade, that's where your forces would be stationed. Now, the battle portion was very difficult because it was pretty random. You could have a few knights, a few archers, a few footmen um, outnumber the enemy, but somehow they'd win, and you just sit there, and the characters were really small. Uh, they're actually bigger on the on the um, console version of the first one, but they were really tiny, and you see the little swords uh, swing like crazy, and you're sitting there crossing your fingers going like, kill the bastard, please. There were so many times my uh, superior force would be destroyed because all you could do is put the forces in the territory and when it was time to battle, you just had to let it play out. But yeah, this is the console version of the first one. Um, and you can see here, little scenarios would come up that would require your attention. I mentioned this before, but I couldn't believe it whenever the Pope's emissary came and one of the options was to behead him. And uh, I had to do it. And you saw a little full motion clip play in the corner. And at the time, those were that really impressed me. Like I said, it was black and white public domain footage. But you see a little head roll into a basket. Or when uh, there was a, a revolt, you'd see a stock footage of some people with torches burning hay and stuff. But very immersive for the time. A lot of fun. Building your own castles was very, very addictive too. 
Uh, and of course, they had a bunch of subsidiaries, one of which was Black Isle Studio, which is most famous for Baldur's Gate. Uh, this is Icewind Dale 2, which used uh, the same engine, but was much more action-oriented. Now, some people did not like that. Um, I liked both, so I found this one to be a whole lot of fun, which is, it's not as in-depth with storytelling or character development. It's really, you create, a, you have a, you roll a party, and you just go whack the crap out of everything. Um, it starts off in an area that's been invaded, and you just have to clear this, I think it's like a fort or a little town. You have to clear it out, and it builds on from there. But classic isometric top-down view, the same kind of menu system or in, in, interface. Um, just a whole lot of fun. And that spawned one of my favorite action role-playing games, Baldur's Gate 2 Dark Alliance. I remember I gamed the system so much in this. If you're, I think, a paladin uh, or a cleric, you can donate money to a church to automatically gain levels. And I would just do that and skip probably an hour of gameplay each time. So by the time I finished the game, I was laying down walls of fire. Nothing could touch me. I was like a demigod. But this series is a lot of fun. Um, I think it's gone to about 30 bucks these days. Well worth the money. Still good fun. Um, I have part one for PS2, so it doesn't really matter which console you have. Uh, each, Both versions are great. But this is purely action role-playing game. So that's Interplay, a huge part of my childhood. And really, it's a shame what happened to them. But they put out some, some true classics. Next up, let me grab the pile here. This is the last one I came up with because there were three contenders, but this one won out, and I'll get to that reason last. But I'm going to have to go with, uh, let me see, what's more representative? Konami. Now, I did enjoy the Contra series growing up. Had a lot of fun with the first two. Really enjoyed the Super Nintendo one, even though I, I never was able to buy it. I only rented it. I just picked uh, Hardcore up last year. And I, I can't get anywhere in this one. This is rock hard. But, of course, great run and gun shooters. But they have so many series I, I forget about, such as Sweet Coden. Now, this is here to represent Part 2. Now, this is this one's good. This is a good entry. I really enjoy the first one, the second, the third. I don't remember liking the fourth much. And I haven't put too much time in this one. I just completed this a few months back. I had the case and manual, but I needed the disc. It took a while to get it. Uh, but that's because I played two what was it, early last year? And I had I got it through PSN because it's so expensive, but I've got to say, that's one of the handful of games that go for $100 that is absolutely worth it. I had such a good time. It's it's quickly become one of my favorite role-playing games. There's so much to it, so many characters who are well-written. There's a lot of humor in it, some some great gags with uh, the visual, even though they're small, kind of pixelated characters, some great visual gags. Um, there's so many little things you can do. So, Sweet Code... You know, aside from a few missteps in the series, most of them are actually really good. Uh, I put a lot of time in the third one on PlayStation 2. The first one can actually be completed in about 20 hours, give or take a few. So if you want to jump on that one, it's I think $10 on PSN. It's a great way to experience the series without too much of a time commitment or a, a money commitment. Uh, 3 did just come out on PSN la late last year. Uh, for It's a PS2 classic. So you can get 1 through 3 now on PSN. I think they're $10 each. Well worth your money. Uh, then they also put out one of my favorite shooting series, and this is one of my favorite shooters of all time, Gradius 5. Or is it Gradius? I'm going to say Gradius 5. Uh, this is also on PSN now as a PS2 Classic for $9.99 or $14.99. Again, worth every penny. The pacing on this is fantastic. I want to say this was developed by Treasure. But because Konami published it, I'm going with that. Uh, like I said, very well paced. Um, the power-ups are just where they need to be for you to kind of maximize the damage. with uh, what. I, well, you can pick kind of what kind of ship type you have. What I mean is they have different weapons and different options, which are little orbs that circle around your craft. You'll see them here. Uh, so you pick which kind of layout you want, or loadout I should say. And then how the power-ups are uh, spaced throughout the level, it allows you to maximize the damage. It becomes a little puzzle to figure out, and that's probably what's so addictive about it. Also, two-player uh, supports two players, which is a lot of fun. Just uh, It looks great. It sounds great. It's got a really good mixture of uh, organic and uh, high-tech sci-fi elements. So definitely high up on the list. Then they put out games like Ring of Red. Now, this is not for everyone, and I understand why. To me, Ring of Red is one of those games that it's shallow, but what it benefits from is there's so many layers to it. So 
while no individual layer is that well developed, I should or complex, I should say. That's really right. They're not complex. There's so much to do that it, you're always busy, and so I, I never minded that none of the elements went too far in depth. Like you'll see here, when you zoom up on an enemy, a percentage ticks down. You have to decide when to fire. You also have support crew. They have different classes, and you can uh, you decide when to engage them by telling them to go forward or, or to pull back. This is when you first get in contact with an enemy, and all of it plays out. Uh, they don't have a screenshot of it on a grid. So it's a, a turn-based strategy initially, and then when two mechs engage, it goes to this screen, which you determine the distance, and you base that on what kind of weapons you have equipped. Then you decide when to fire and when to deploy your, your side infantry. Like I said, none of it's too developed. The When you actually shoot, it's not like Mech Warrior where you have a lot of control over the units, and when you deploy your, your, your uh, support infantry, you don't have a lot of um, control over them, but it's just enough to keep you busy and always thinking about what to do next. So, like I said, their stable is fantastic, but this is what really tipped them over. Castlevania. Now, I enjoy Castlevania, but these are actually for nostalgia because these are my childhood copies and actually uh, half and half of mine and my brother's. My brother only played four video games growing up. Castlevania 2, Castlevania 3, Mega Man 2, and um, Metroid. And he didn't really play Metroid so much as he just kind of liked the world and would run around. He actually tried to beat these. And he will periodically ask me, like, what was that game with the guy with the whip? That's how much they, they made an impact on him. Didn't like any other game. So I remember sitting around with him entire Saturdays trying to figure these out. Castlevania 2 was just impossible to figure out. Uh, but what he, he would do, which is such a, a dick move for an older brother, I remember he told me, there's a wall of spikes, and if you walk into it enough times, you'll be transported to a different area, and you can progress. And I believed him, because I was a little idiot. And I, I just sat there, killing myself over and over in these spike walls. And after about the fifth time, I thought, I think he's lying to me. And then he pulled that again with Metroid. I wasn't a bright kid. You know what? It wasn't that I wasn't bright. I was overly trusting, and he took advantage of it. But that's why Konami wins. Uh, fantastic stable of games. And my nostalgia with my brother in Castlevania is what tips it over. I remember he kept running Castlevania 3 and Mega Man 2 to the point I was about to rip my hair out. We alternated weekends and we got one rental. And every time it was Castlevania 3 or Mega Man 2, I was begging him, please, anything else, anything. I don't care if you get Barbie. Just do not get those games again. And you come out, guess what I got? I'm thinking, uh, that G.I. Joe game or that one with the robot. Yeah, he's kind of a robot. Mega Man 2. Ah, oh, you ass. Next up is Lucas Arts. I'll start off with Dark Forces for PC. A great first-person shooter called a Doom clone at the time. If you remember, that was what pretty much every first-person shooter was called, was Doom clone. But everyone was really impressed with this, as was I. Now, I do have some of their adventure games, but I was never that big into adventure titles. This is one of the later Monkey Islands. Um, yeah, I found them fun, and they were okay. Maniac Mansion... Uh, I really was impressed with the Indiana Jones one. Was it Curse of Atlantis? I thought it looked great. Really good uh, sound. But I didn't really have the patience for adventure games growing up. There was a few that I really did enjoy and I play a lot of. But it wasn't so much these for LucasArts. It was these. The Holy Trinity. X-Wing and T TIE Fighter. And this is X-Wing Alliance, which is a good game. But you got to insert X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, which wasn't great when it first came out, but the expansion made it great. I, I, I don't think I can convey how much I enjoyed these games. A, a good example. A friend in high school let me borrow Rebel Assault 2 and uh, TIE Fighter. So played Rebel Assault 2, and it was fun. You know, I know a lot of people didn't like it back then. You can get it for PlayStation 1, and it's a lot of full motion video, kind of mini-game-ish. But, you know, I liked Star Wars. I wasn't a massive fan of the universe. You know, I had all the movies on VHS, and I had art books growing up. So, you know, I couldn't name all the characters, but I enjoyed it. So I had fun with Rebel Assault 2, and I kept reading about TIE Fighter. I got, I think, a 94% in PC Gamer. I'd go to Sam's, and they had it all over the end caps in X-Wing, because that came out, uh, that was released a little bit earlier. And I remember playing it the first night I got hooked. It had a, you, you needed a gamepad. I had a Gravis gamepad. Uncomfortable to use, but worked like a charm for the game. I actually got an eye infection the next day. 
Went to the doctor, had it dilated. I could barely see. I stayed up playing TIE Fighter. I beat TIE Fighter with an eye infection. It hurt so much to look at the monitor, but I could not tear myself away. There was a whole side story of uh, a faction in the Empire going against the Emperor, and it was just all this great storytelling. And it and Dark Forces are really the first times I can remember that a licensed product didn't just coast on the license, but improved it. These actually expanded the Star Wars universe and in such a way that you felt like you were in it. Like, these were just incredible. The I actually understood why Stormtroopers missed so much by playing Dark Forces because the blaster was just so fast and it was a little erratic. But being in their position, I was much more sympathetic to them than I was before I played it. Like, just shoot them, and then you're trying to play, and you're thinking, oh, man, I can't shoot, I can't hit shit. But X-Wing was a lot of fun, but TIE Fighter just took it to another level. Uh, these are the later CD-ROM releases that added audio and some other fun stuff. Um, you see at the bottom, also included X-Wing vs. Tider Flight School, which was more of a sampler. Uh, yeah, playable sample missions from the X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter release, which was kind of, I mean, it's unfortunate they didn't include this in the pack. But to have these three, I couldn't believe when this came out. X-Wing Alliance is, is a good later release, but they just don't have the magic of TIE Fighter. X-Wing is fantastic. It's really good. X-Wing Alliance is really good, but TIE Fighter is just... Because you to let you play f for the Empire was just... I was not expecting it. And it was everything I read it to be plus more. It was so much fun. And they released released it recently on Good Old Games, which is has superior versions to the Steam release. And you get the original release, a 98 enhanced release, which is... I guess you can play that in this one as well. and But the 94, 95 CD release, which is the definitive one. Uh, this one might actually be with the improved graphics. I don't know. I just remember finally getting to play it again and being so happy. And now I'm replaying it through the good old games release. And it's kind of hard to set up a good control scheme. But, oh, this, this is it. But they also put out some really good titles that had nothing uh, to do with Star Wars. Gladius. This was really overlooked. It's a turn-based strategy game um, set in an alternate kind of roam, and you fight in the Colosseum, and you have different classes based on the gladiators. And it has a whole side story where you're trying to fight back. It's very glad gladiator-ish, but this was really addictive and a lot of fun. And man, it just did not get the recognition. Game of Four gave it a 9.25, but I remember it being just... Everyone made fun of the name. I remember, uh, this was it, Tech TV was ZDTV. That became G4. Uh, the review show with Adam Sussler, he was making fun of the, the title, saying, uh, well, why don't you just call a game Gun? And then the, the game Gun came out, and he said nothing about the title. I just remember being so irritated, because this was a fantastic game that got overlooked. So if you ever see this in a bargain bin, or what, definitely pick it up. A lot of fun. Fantastic art style, too. Um, and this swings back to Star Wars, but really to show how they worked with other companies. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. This is, of course, Bioware. I, ha I didn't put much time in the second one. Um, I have it for PC. I mean, It was okay, but I really enjoyed this one. So they kind of run the gamut. You didn't have too many role-playing games from them, but the few you had were really good. And then that's when it kind of went downhill when the prequels came out, and they released a lot of duds. You had some really good games during that era. The GameCube Rogue Squadron series. But then you had stuff like, uh, like Episode 1 Power Battle or something where it was this action game that wasn't very good. The Pod Racer game wasn't bad. But they also released non-Star Wars stuff like RTX Red Rock, which was garbage. I remember at one point, I couldn't complete the game. And it turns out my character had bumped into a light post that fell down and blocked the exit. I didn't think it was possible for a game to not have that kind of stuff bolted down. But no, they, they apparently, it was so sloppy that you could hit objects over that could keep you from progressing. And the game actually crashed a few times. One of the few PlayStation 2 games that actually did that. And there was another instance where I couldn't get through a door because uh, like the screen didn't load correctly. So yeah, they had some serious missteps. But back in the 90s, they were on fire. And uh, see, Gladius is a... What is this? 2003 release. And this is 2003 as well. 
So I guess that was like their last hurrah. But before that, they were a hell of a company. And lastly, of course, it had to be Sega. To be honest, I like Sonic, but as a kid, I preferred Mario. If you, you could put any Sonic in front of me, and I would grab any other Mario to play. I was never a big fan of the whole attitude thing of mascots. It felt so gimmicky and tacked on. But Sonic had really good level design. I appreciated that. I did like the speed. But uh, I like the secrets more of Mario. I like the pacing more of Mario. But still, Sonic's a great series, although it's fallen on some hard times. But this is a fantastic collection. You get a little of everything. You get Fantasy Star, wonderful role-playing series, Streets of Rage 2, great... Uh, I think this has Streets of Rage... This release has, I think, more than the second one, right? The, the back only lists two. Um, but I think it has the first one as well. Uh, I'm only seeing the second one. Oh, and they have Streets of Rage 3 on here as well. Great Brawlers, Rystar, great platformer. Um, just so many Shinobi, all the classics on this. Uh, Target actually still had a brand new copy of this. Uh, not the red re-release, but just for 15 bucks. So go to your Target and see if you can find it. Or just go to Amazon and get the, re the uh, greatest hits one. I mean, you get so... That's the best bang for your buck. But they also put out some of my absolute favorite games. And this is so cheap, it's criminal. This is the three-pack. This is what Sega released to get the Saturn sales moving again. These are some of my three all-time favorite games. Virtua Fighter 2 still holds up. If you take into account the cast and the balance, it's still a lot of fun. Moon jumping aside, it's just addictive. Just as addictive today to me. Virtua Cop, few light gun games match Virtua Cop. They did the skeletal modeling right, which is you did the enemies didn't just die when you shot them. They would drop their gun or you'd shoot them in the knee, and all those would build to a combo modifier. So you could shoot them in the knee a few times, shoot them in the hand a few times, and just build up, rack up your score and build it up. A lot of games, you know, Namco is probably the standard bearer for light gun games now, but no one really matched them back then. I love the Virtua Cop series, and they tell you USA pop in aside. Uh, handles great, power sliding, absolute ball. The recent, as this recent, it came out a few years ago, Xbox Live and PSN Daytona USA just proves how well the gameplay holds up. Power sliding is just, once I start doing it, I don't want to stop playing the game. You can get this three-pack still sealed for 15 bucks on eBay, and you can get the game separately for a dollar or two, which to me is mind-blowing because I remember paying 60 bucks for these individually when they first came out. And then this three-pack, not even being upset this three-pack came out because everyone should play these. And then they've continued on. Virtua Fighter Five is my favorite fighting series. Um, I think competitively people prefer 4, but I love 5 uh, online and 5 Final Showdown. Probably my favorite cast of fighters, especially female fighters. Virtua Fighter has the best cast of female fighters. Um, they added a few later on I wasn't too crazy about. Um, like the... Uh, the Mexican wrestler, what style is that? I'm forgetting. Um, I'm not a big fan like El Forte and Street Fighter. That's not a, that's just not a style I click with. But I know why they did it because all the other fighters were too. But yeah, the classic roster. Uh, they did add a lot of new characters in the fourth version, which had a few re-releases. I liked all of them. Great game, and they were originally imaginative. Now that's that's been restricted in recent years, which is unfortunate. Um, but back then you had stuff like Knights, which when you play it, it kind of doubles as a racer, a kind of a score attack game, uh, an adventure game, like an action adventure game. There's just so much to it. You fly through rail courses, trying to do stylish tricks to get through rings, but then there's boss fights and there's enemies you have to swirl around. Uh, everyone was anticipating it, and while not everyone liked it when it came out, it is a really solid game. It's hard to know what to make of it until you play it, but it does feel very freeing, especially given how restrictive it actually is. And, of course, they did stuff like put out Christmas Nights. This is my original one. I got this in an issue of Next Generation Magazine. I play this every Christmas. I listen to the soundtrack every Christmas and actually throughout the year. Uh, the fact they just gave this away is phenomenal. And then they would do stuff like Fighters Mega Mix, where they put the Daytona USA car as a, f a playable character. Fantastic. Uh, it's Fighting Vipers, plus Virtua Fighter, plus they added in Virtua Fighter 3 moves, plus there's characters from Virtua Cop, uh, Sonic Fighters, and 
Um, I think Pepsi Man's in this one. So just, they've lost a lot of that imagination, which is very unfortunate. They were kings of the arcade. So during that transitional era in the early to mid 32-bit, to me, they just dominated. And since then, they, they've published some stuff. Like, I play the Total War series. Um, what else have they put out? Oh, Relic. They put out some of the Company Hero games. And, you know, those are fun. But to me, I don't think anything can match Sega from late 80s to uh, late 90s. That, that that may say 88 to 98, 99. That span, to me, they're just the toppest, the, like, the toppest tier possible. This is going for 25 minutes. If you watched it all, thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, Novabug, for another great question. And I will talk to everyone later.